after so many years on the road, I think we learned how to do it properly, and that is to stay healthy. That's the key, and it's a, it's always a bit of a battle. It's easy to fall into a rut or get bored, and that's what you fight mostly is the boredom. Everybody's got their little obsessions, particularly on the road, because it's a really important part of keeping sane. And for me, when I first started playing golf in the early 90s, that was the perfect thing. To get out of your hotel room, to get on a golf course, you're there for four or five hours, you hit some balls, you maybe have lunch. If it's a day off, you might play in a second round. It's just a wonderful escape from being in that hotel room and going through all that same stuff that you always do. I get outside, you know, I meet other people and yeah. I, I love it. It's always tough when you, you get off to a, a bit of a bad start oh, yeah. and you're constantly trying to fix everything. Yeah, it's just nice to get a shift, something that's completely different than the gig and the whole mentality of being at the gig and a show day and all of that stuff. It's just great to be out and, and enjoy it. I mean, it's so beautiful. Birds chirping, horses neighing, bones cracking. Golf is all about tempo and rhythm and not trying too hard, not getting in the way of your swing. Much like playing an instrument is, get out of the way and just let your instinct take over, let your hands take over and play. How often during a tour would you go out for golfing? Most, I would say probably on average five days a week when we're on the road. That's the thing about golf, it just gets into your head. That's the challenge of the game. Like every day it's different. You can be great one day, you go out the next day and you're a total bum. But if it gets into your head and you're, then you start thinking about your grip and your stance and you know, getting up here, and it can drive you crazy. Where are you? Uh, hopefully I'm just short of the, the water there. It landed in the fairway, but whether it held, I don't know. I love it on a day off to play a couple rounds. I come back, I'm beat, I get a good night's sleep, I get up early the next day, I feel fit. I ended up becoming an owner of a golf club. Me owning a golf club is like a heroin addict buying a farm in Afghanistan. It's like, yes, I'm set for life now. <laughs> I'll just stay right here. I'm spending a day at the beach. Yeah, I'm not gonna let it spoil it. I'm gonna just enjoy the game, enjoy the weather, and I'm gonna enjoy the company. There it is. What more could you want? I love to collect things, and I love to find undiscovered things. Art became an interest, photography, wine, and baseball. It's just endlessly fascinating to me. Baseball became a way of distracting me during a tour. I would get up midday after getting in at four in the morning, and I'd turn on the tube as I'm eating my breakfast, and there was nothing on the tube except soap operas and the Cubs. So I used to look forward to watching the Cubs during breakfast every day. And so as soon as I came home after that tour, I got myself Blue Jay tickets. It became a great escape for me. And uh, eventually I just fell in love with the game. Started uh, following it more and more seriously. And it became a way of keeping my mind off of the seriousness. I don't want to think that what I do is so important. I'm just a musician. I'd much rather get excited about something else. Say the 27 Yankees, mm. one of the, considered one of the great baseball teams of all time. Uh, obviously, these are some of the greatest Yankees, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle. I have a special fondness for the guys from the 60s because those are, that was when I was a kid growing up, so mm -hmm. I love those. And I love it that it's an 18th century sport, and that's why people can't watch it now, because it's a complete anachronism. It is out of time. There's no business being played in the 21st century, but that's what I love about it. This is one of two known bats that were believed to have belonged to Joe Jackson, the great left fielder for the White Sox, Black Sox. There's a great picture of him. Mm. It's, you know, these are Hall of Fame pitchers, the greatest pitchers ever. Satchel Paige, Grover Cleveland, Alexander, Cy Young, Walter Johnson, Dizzy Dean, Lefty Gomez, Dazzy Vance, Christy Matheson. That is maybe the rarest ball that I own. This is fun. These are my presidential baseballs. That's Roosevelt, a Herbert Hoover, Dwight Eisenhower, Harry Truman, John Kennedy, Nixon Carter, Fidel Castro, recent acquisition. I was very happy to get that. 
great to collect. Really a fun hobby. The more hobbies you have, the more interesting life is. I wanted to be a major league pitcher for a couple of years there. Fantasized about that, but that wasn't going to happen. It wasn't a life, you know, to be slapping around uh, all day long and then playing 25 minutes and then slapping around for the next 23 and a half hours and playing 25 minutes. Already within a month, it was like, this, this is not a life, you know. Basically, I started filling those hours uh, with breathing. So through the years, I found many hobbies to fill that time. I took up model car building at one time. We used to race radio-controlled cars backstage. And then bicycling. In the 80s, I bought a bicycle and just kept it in the luggage bay of the bus. And pretty soon started riding every day. If the cities were 100 miles or so apart, I started riding from city to city. I'd get the bus driver to drop me off. Drop me off at 100 miles out of, you know, Denver or whatever. And I would ride the rest of the way in on the, on the back roads, of course. And uh, that led to another thing of getting around the cities and seeing the cities too and going through the art museums. And it became another part of education. And then the, the broader education, though, being on the roads every day on my bicycle. I was out there among people, you know, the thing that I still preserve today on the motorcycle. I'm riding through their towns. I go down roads every day that nobody goes down unless they live there. I always knew for the longest time that someday I would ride a motorcycle. It was like in the back of my mind when I grow up, I'll have a motorcycle. And then when I got into it in the 90s, I got into it big time. So it was pretty obvious that by the next tour I was going to be thinking about traveling by motorcycle, but the logistics of doing that, I got a bus with a trailer, so after a show I could sleep on the bus and then unload the motorcycle from the trailer in the morning and tell the bus driver, okay, I want to be on this little road. Of course, I don't want to just ride the interstates and freeways. I want the back roads, the smallest towns, the smallest roads. And when I see the itinerary, I don't mind telling you I look at the days off, you know, and like, okay, I'm going to ride from there. To, oh, that'll be a great ride. Now, this, I want to go that way. I just have this hunger to see what that road that's on the map looks looks like in real life. just such a fulfilling way to pass the time. And so free, too. I leave after the show on the bus and I'm on my own. As long as I show up for work the next day, you know, no one cares and no one knows where I am that night. That's one of the nicest feelings. And it's so liberating in a way. There is a, a crushing insularity about touring. You're traveling around with a group of 50 people that are together all the time, every day, and then, then the, the expectations of people that would like to invade my life and become my new best friend and all that. I'm so free of all that. But on the other hand, I don't have to isolate myself. I'm out with people every day, but I'm one of them. I'm not, hey, you're that famous guy. It's like I'm in gas stations and motels and restaurants. I talk to people every day as people. And I, that's wonderful, you know, as much as I am shy and reserved, um, that doesn't apply to strangers, you know. I'm perfectly happy to pass the time of day with somebody at a gas station.